All right. So today we're talking about Genesis 39. Well, we're going to be reading Genesis 39. Um, for those of you guys who have been joining us yesterday, we read Genesis 38, um, which again, like I said yesterday, um, Genesis 38 was kind of like a disconnected story from the rest of the, the whole story here about Joseph. Um, Genesis 38 was about Judah and Tamar, which has really has nothing to do with how, uh, you know, the 12 tri or the 12, um, well, I guess you could say the 11 or 10 uh, brothers of Joseph uh, sold Joseph to the to, to some merchants. And um, so now uh, Genesis 39 is kind of like a continuation of Genesis 37. Um, but before we get into all that, let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you again for today. We want to thank you, Father, for um, uh, for giving us the time, the opportunity to study again. And we ask you, Father, to please be here. And to, we invite the Holy Spirit to come and teach us, Father. Uh, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, again, we're going to be doing Genesis 39, and it's about Joseph and Potiphar's wife. And that's what we're going to be talking about today in today's Daily Bread Bible for Beginners and the Inspired by God YouTube channel. If you guys want to subscribe, hello, my name is Tilla. You guys can follow me on all social media if you guys want to. And again, Genesis 39, here we go. Genesis, Gen Genesis, Genesis 39, starting from verse 1. And Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites. So Joseph was bought, which had brought him down thither. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. And Joseph found grace in, the, in his sight, and he served him, and he made him overseer over his house, and all that he had put in his hand. And it came to pass, from the time that he had made him overseer in his house, and over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake, and the blessing of the Lord was upon all the, that he had in the house, and in the field. In the field. Okay. So we have Joseph being sold um, to the Egyptians. And uh, um, the Lord was with Joseph. And because, um, because it says, And it came to pass that th th at that time that he made him overseer in his house. So, uh, Joseph became the overseer in the house of the master, which is the master, uh, which is the Egyptian master. Um, he had made him overseer of his house, and because the master was so uh, kind to Joseph, the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake, and the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house. And then in the field. Here we go. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he knew not aught he had, save the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. And it came to pass, after these things, that is that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph, and she said, lie with me but he refused and sh and said unto his master's wife behold my master wadeth me or wadeth not uh, what is with me in this house and he hath committed all that he hath to my hand there is none greater in this house than i neither hath he kept back anything from me but thee because thou art his wife. 
How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? So, we have to realize what Joseph is um, facing here. Joseph, hmm, the wife was the master's wife, right? You know, the wife can give Joseph whatever she wanted. She was rich just like the master was rich. But Joseph said, no, I don't want you. I don't, I don't want to. I don't want to do this with you because then it'll be a sin. So you got to think about what Joseph was facing at that time. Either Joseph, or either the, the, you know, the, the wife is going to do something to Joseph, like lie about Joseph to, to, to Potiphar and say, look, Joseph is doing this in the house and blah, blah, blah. Joseph could have been easily killed or, you know, whatever. Or Joseph could have took the bribe. Could have could have taken a bribe, and 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 you know and the wife could have said could have told her could have told him, you know what I'll give you all these things. I'm rich just like my husband. I, I will give you all these things, just so that you can do these things with me. So Joseph was facing two temp two yeah I, I would say two temptations, temptation number one well three temptations, temptation number one was the wife, Potiphar's wife. Temptation number two was was that if he did do what they what Potiphar's wife wanted to do, he would have you know probably been richer or he probably would have been given more things. Um, and then the other thing, which is kind of like the opposite or the on the other side of the spectrum, is if he did not do what Potiphar's wife was asking him to do, there was a great chance where he could lose his, his life. So he's faced with three things here, three problems here, all wrapped into one. But Joseph didn't want to do it because he had faith in God. And it came to pass, as she spake to Joseph day by day, that he hearkened not unto her to lie by her or to be with her. And it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house of, to do his business, and there was none of the men of the house... Uh, there within and she caught him by his garment saying lie with me and he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out and it came to pass when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and was fled forth that she called unto the men of her house and spake unto them saying see he hath brought in a in an Hebrew unto us to mock us, he came in unto me to lie with me, and, lie, and I cried with a loud voice. So now she's lying. She's lying. She, she, she doesn't like the fact that, um, that Joseph didn't lie with her. Now she's lying about him. She's lying about him to the men of the house. And she said to the men of the house, look, he, li he was lying with me, but he's a Hebrew. So now, <laughs> Joseph is in, in, in a whole heap of trouble. Joseph is in a whole heap of trouble. <laughs> um, okay, so, and it came to pass, when he heard that I lived, when it came to pass, when he heard that I lifted up my voice and cried, that he left his garment with me and fled and got him out. And she laid up his garment by her until his Lord came home. And she spake unto him according to these words, saying, The Hebrew servant which thou hast brought unto us came in unto me to mock me. That's not true. That's not true. And it came to pass, as I lifted up my voice and cried, that he left his garment with me and fled out. And it came to pass, when his master heard the words of his wife, which she spake unto him, saying, After this manner did thy servant do, uh, did thy servant to me, that his wrath was kindled. And Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound. And he was there in the prison. 
But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prisoner. And the keeper of the prisoner committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison. The keeper of the prisoner of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison. And whatsoever they did there, he was the doer of it. He commanded them. The keeper of the prisoner looked not at, to anything that was under his hand, because the Lord was with him, and that he and that which uh, and that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. It's very sig- okay. So, so there's a lot of things significant in in this chapter. We know that Joseph is a type of Christ. Joseph didn't want to sin. Um, because Joseph didn't want to sin, he was taken to uh, to prison. He was taken to prison. Um, here's something for you guys to think about. Um, what does it mean that he left his garment with Potiphar's wife? He left this garment with a woman. What does that mean? He left his garment with a woman. Hmm. Okay, first of all, who was the sinner? Was it Joseph or was it the woman? It was the woman. It was the woman. The woman was the sinner. But he left his garment with the woman. What does that mean? He, he had his garment, but then, you know, he was fully clothed, but then he left his garment, meaning what? He became naked. Nakedness in the Bible is a symbol for for sin. Nakedness in the Bible is a symbol symbol for sin. So we have Joseph, who was not a sinner. We have the a woman who was a sinner. The woman tried to sin with Joseph. Joseph doesn't want to sin. But Joseph, uh, um, um, um. The woman was trying to commit something with Joseph that Joseph didn't want to commit. Joseph left his garment, became naked for the sinner. Became naked for the sinner. And now the master comes and he saw that he, he saw that the har- not the harlot, but the wife was not a sinner, even though she was the sinner. He saw that the wife was not a sinner and that Joseph was the sinner. Does that remind you of something? Who is the woman in this story? What is a woman a symbol of in the Bible? Church. Was the is the woman the church? Is the is the church the sinners? Yes. Is Jesus Christ the sinner? No. But Jesus Christ gave up his robe of righteousness for the church. So that when the master sees what's going on, when the master investigates, when the master investigates, the master will see that the church was not a sinner. But Joseph, which was a type of Christ, Christ became sin for us. Christ became sin for us so that we are not looked upon by God as sinners, but that God will look at Christ as if he was the sinner and he was the one punished for us. Very significant, very symbolic, right? There's so much things to to, to look at here. There's so many things to, to look at here, but... Um, Let's keep going. What else? What else was there? Okay. Um, it says, here's another significant thing. The keeper of the, the prisoner, the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners. What is a prison a symbol of in the Bible? Bondage. What is bondage? Bondage to sin. Prison in the Bible is it, symbolic for... Um, um, the holding place of sinners. People who sinned are in prison or are in bondage to sin. Remember when 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 God t- 
took the Israelites out of the land of Egypt. He said, I took you out of the house of bondage. I took you out of prison. Sin or prison is symbolic for sin. And the, and the prisoners are the ones who are sinning. And it says here that the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand. Remember, Joseph is a type of Christ. Committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison. Committed to Jesus' hands all of the sinners that were in bondage to sin. Do you see the parallel? And whatsoever they did there, he was the doer of it. The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand because the Lord was with him and that and that which he did, the Lord made it prosper. So we're going to stop right there for today. This is Genesis 39. We're going to stop right there for today. Um, again, there are so many things, symbolic things that you can see here um, about the, you know, uh, with Joseph being the type of Christ, then, then there's the master of the house, the house being the type of a church. Um, what else? Um, the wife of the master or a woman type of a church. Um, the garment type of the type of salvation. I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you guys something really quick. The garment is a type of salvation. Check this out. I'm going to show it to you guys really quick. Give me a second. Um, uh, where was it? Oh, I think it's in Isaiah 61. Okay, Isaiah 61 and verse 10. Check this out. The garment. The garment. What is the garment? A symbol of in the Bible? Check this out. Isaiah 10. Isaiah 61 verse 10. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. For he hath clothed me with the garment of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments and as a bride adorneth her herself uh, with her jewels. So the garment symbolically is righteousness, salvation. And we have Joseph becoming naked, giving away his garments, his salvation to who? The woman who was the sinner. Very symbolic. There's very there's a lot of spiritual application there, but we're gonna stop right here. Genesis, uh, was it Genesis thirty nine? Genesis thirty nine. We're gonna stop right there. Um, tomorrow we're gonna be reading Genesis forty, which is a continuation of Joseph's story. Um, tomorrow in Genesis forty, again he's in, he's still in prison, but um, he talks to two prisoners that have dreams. So. We're going to stop right there. Um, if you guys see more spiritual applications, see more layers of truth, you guys can uh, comment them down below so that we can uh, read them and, and learn more um, from some of you guys. And uh, if you guys were um, blessed by this Bible study, um, please like and share. Share with your friends, your relatives, your co-workers, anybody who you know would be blessed by this uh, Bible study. And, of course, if you guys are new to this channel and want more Christian content, please subscribe and also make sure to hit the bell so that you guys can get notified every time we upload new videos and new Bible uh, daily bread, Bible for Beginners. And if you guys are inspired to um, support this ministry, you guys can do so by uh, praying for this online uh, video ministry and also donating at schoolforprofits.tv. You guys can also um, contact me at ATTILA, um, let's see, you guys can also contact me at AT, no, that's not it, at uh, ATTILA at schoolforprofits.tv for those of you guys who want uh, to donate in a different way, maybe you guys can, you know, contact me and, and you guys can buy this or we can talk about, you know, the price of this, I don't know what price I should
give this out for. You guys can let me know whatever you think it's worth. I did, I did this myself. I painted this myself. Um, so you guys, instead of uh, instead of just donating and getting nothing in return, you guys can uh, ask me for that. We'll talk about the price because I don't know what price to give this. And you guys, in, instead of donating and getting nothing in return, you guys can donate and get this in return. So for those of you guys who want to do that, again, my email address, my email address is is not there, A-T-T-I-L-A uh, at schoolforprofits.tv. There it is. That's my email address. Um, or you can even go to the website and uh, email me there. Um, so that's all we have for today. Thank you guys for uh, watching and thank you guys for coming through and stopping by. Let's pray before we go. Our Father in heaven, thank you again for this opportunity to um, read the Bible and this opportunity to be led by you in this study. Uh, we ask you now, Father, to please be, uh, be with us, continue to bless us as we continue to study. And we ask you, Father, to, um, um, to please lead us daily. And we ask you all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys. Thank you, guys. Um, if you guys are uh, new to this, um, you know, to this, to this uh, YouTube channel, you guys already know what I'm going to say. You guys can, uh, if you have any other questions, you guys can contact me or even go to the Discord. The link is in the description. I'll see you guys there. Discord. Again, link is in the description. Peace out.